Hey, hey, this video is going to be an introduction to uh, the names of drugs, the different kinds of names, why they're named a certain way, how they're named, and uh, what people mean when they talk about generic drugs or uh, proprietary drug names, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to talk about this in chronological order, so just kind of an order that makes sense. Now, there's four kinds of drug names we're going to talk about, those being the chemical name, the company name, the brand name, and the generic name. And if you know anything about you know the pharmaceutical industry, uh, you'll see that those four naming systems are kind of, they kind of follow the development of a drug in the drug's lifespan. So let's start. Remember the first one I said was chemical. Now the chemical name of a drug <clears throat> is like when that organic chemist or that scientist behind the drug originally comes up with the idea of what the drug's going to be. So like, hey, I think that if we made a, a drug or a chemical that was like this, it might treat you know rheumatoid arthritis or whatever. They get this idea, whether based on previous research or it's just a novel idea or whatever. Um, and so these the chemical names are going to sound pretty similar to uh, the names of drugs that you learned in organic chemistry if you've taken that course. Um, a lot of them resemble the IUPAC, which is like an international naming system. And so um, for drugs, so the idea is that anybody around the world could have this this name this chemical name and then could recreate through you know organic synthesis or organic changes could then recreate this drug if they had this name so you're going to see things like you know like 2 comma 6 dioxy that you know this long commas and hyphenated name and some of them are quite long some of them are like you know a paragraph long of numbers and letters like this um, look at the IUPAC, IUPAC, the International Naming System, and that'll give you a pretty good idea of what to expect from a chemical name. So we have this scientist. He comes up with this really long chemical name for this drug, and the company's like, well, hey, when we talk about this drug in development meetings and R&D meetings and whatever, research meetings, we don't want to talk, we don't have to write out this whole thing, so we're going to come up with a company name. But we don't really know if this drug is going to be successful or not, so we're just going to give it like a coded name. And that way, if you know if there's espionage or whatever, people will have no idea what we're talking about too. So, like they might call it like T126, you know, and this means something different to each company. So like T might be a code, and 126 might be like a batch number. Like 125 didn't work, and all the ones before it. So now we're on batch 126, and it's working well. And so this company could write an email with multiple drugs in that email without having to write the paragraph long chemical name uh, you know in place of each one of those okay so let's say that this drug is working great we're ready for clinical trials and we're ready to sell it well now you have a brand and the way <clears throat> to remember what brand is is it's the proprietary name like um, Gucci you know or like Dolce or that sort of thing these brands are like the expensive names. So these are like the, um, these aren't like the generics yet. These are like um, names that are specific to the company, specific to this drug, and it's proprietary. So only uh, they can sell it. We'll talk about that here in a little bit, but the one I'm gonna use as an example is Tylenol. So people usually use Tylenol um, interchangeably, thinking that Tylenol is the name of a drug or a chemical name or a generic name, but it's actually the Johnson & Johnson, uh, it's a subsidiary company of Johnson & Johnson, they own that brand name. So for a while, when it first came out, <clears throat> they were the only ones that could make this drug, and it could only go by this name. Now after so many years, it depends on the country that you're in, and what kind of drug it is and whatever, um, a cheaper form of the drug comes out called a generic. And why is it cheaper? Well, because now the patent has run out on the drug so anybody can make it so like after johnson and johnson's patent on tylenol ran out because they had discovered it so they had proprietary rights over it then you know every drug company out there so like pfizer for example could look up and be like oh that chemical structure is this blah 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 this paragraph long thing dude we could make that and we could sell that at half the cost that tylenol is um you know walmart makes its own kind of tylenol now that's you know you can buy it anywhere um and so that generic name is then going to be not a brand name, but a more generic, um, yet still arbitrary, usually, name. And so here, 
you can see the four kinds of names. Chemical, which is like when the drug is in its infancy, it's just an idea, but it's this universal language of chemical structure. The company then starts developing it, makes a code name for it. Then, when it's successfully made, you get a brand name that is proprietary. This is where the big bucks are in their brand name. And then after so many years, like anywhere from seven to 20 years, depending on which country you're in and what kind of drug we're talking about, uh, it morphs into the generic realm. And that's where drugs finally start to get cheap because competition drives it down. Um, kind of some fun facts. The, uh, the average cost it takes to get a drug from this idea to this brand name is anywhere from 100 million to 350 million dollars per drug. Um, and then another interesting thing is some of the most expensive drugs out there right now are called biologics. And a lot of them go by these brand names because they're all really new. <clears throat> and a part of Obamacare was they took um, the time down from being branded to generic to I think 12 years. So 12 years after the inception, a lot of those biologic drugs, there's going to be some generic ones which will make biologics and immunomodulators a lot cheaper, which is a good thing. All right, that's an introduction to drug names, chemical, company, brand, and generic. Thanks.